Hello everyone, welcome to Radiology Case Review Series. In this video, we are going to look at images of a 10 something year old child who presented with left upper quadrant mass. The child did not have any previous medical history. We started with ultrasound examination first. On the ultrasound, we can clearly see a soft tissue density mass in the left upper quadrant in the pancreatic region. There was some foci of color Doppler signal within the lesion. We referred the patient for MRI examination. I'm going to scroll through the MRI images. On the axial T2 images, we can identify a large, well encapsulated mass, pretty much replacing the entire pancreas. The lesion demonstrated low ADC signal. On the pericontrast T1 images, we can clearly identify regions of T1 hyperintensity, which probably represents proteinaceous material and hemorrhage. On the post contrast images, we can see slight enhancement of the solid component of the lesion. We can also see the necrotic foci. As part of pre-surgical planning, we also did CT angiogram and CT venogram to delineate the vascular anatomy. On the CT angiogram, we can see large necrotic mass in the region of pancreas, but without internal vascularity. Also notice that there is no calcification seen on the CT images. The free gas is related to the biopsy which the patient had undergone just before the CT scan. On the delayed venous phases, we can see the enhancement of the solid component of the lesion with large regions of necrosis. And if you look, the portal vein is occluded at the level of the pancreatic mass with extensive collateral vessels seen predominantly in the peripancreatic region. This is an excellent reference article from Radiographics on pancreatic masses in children and young adults. As you can see, there is wide differential diagnosis for pancreatic lesions in children. Whenever dealing with pancreatic lesions in children or in adults, it is important to make sure there is no underlying syndromic disorder. Our patient did not have any known medical illness. So for our child, the main differential diagnosis is between pancreatic blastoma versus solid pseudopapillary tumor. So we are dealing with a partially cystic, partially solid mass. So this is a very nice article where they assess the CT and MRI features trying to differentiate pancreatic blastoma versus solid pseudopapillary tumor. So based on this article, let's see if we can tease out what the diagnosis will be in our patient. Our child was 10 something. Typically pancreatic blastoma is seen in children less than five years. Our child did not have elevated alpha fetoprotein. The lesion was large, so this feature is not helpful for us. Our patient had well encapsulated lesion, whereas with pancreatic blastoma, the margins are ill-defined. Pancreatic blastoma typically will have calcification. Our patient did not demonstrate calcification on the CT. There were T1 hyperintense foci on the MRI in our patient, corresponding to the hemorrhage, which will be unusual in pancreatic blastoma. There was no abnormal or increased vascularity demonstrated on the CT angiogram, which is typically seen in patients with pancreatic blastoma. Our patient had portal venous occlusion. It is unclear if this is related to the invasion or extrinsic compression. So this feature is not useful. There was no metastasis seen in our patient. Our patient also had lower ADC value on the MRI. So this feature is again not useful. So there are some features which are strongly suggestive of solid pseudopapillary tumor. Indeed, at pathology, this turned out to be solid pseudopapillary tumor. Solid pseudopapillary tumor has multiple other names, so it is important to be familiar with other terminologies which can be used for the same. The commonest terminology which I came across in the literature are pseudopapillary neoplasm and solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm. Since we are doing a lot of CTs nowadays, solid pseudopapillary tumors can be an incidental finding. This paper assessed the imaging appearances of small pseudopapillary tumor. Based on this article, they found that when the solid pseudopapillary tumor was less than three centimeter in diameter, the imaging features were different. There are usually no necrotic foci when it's less than three centimeter and it can appear like a solid tumor. SPTs typically do not enhance in the pancreatic phase and can become isodense to the pancreatic tissue in the delayed venous phase. So it is important to look for this lesion in the pancreatic phase. As mentioned in this article, small SPTs can mimic other solid pancreatic lesions. However, unlike adenocarcinoma, which is 
one of the common solid pancreatic masses. The lesion does not cause dilatation of the pancreatic duct, which can be a usual differentiating feature. I hope you found this video to be informative. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.